Hey everybody, Marion the Barbarian here. Good day, good evening, good morning, whatever it may be for you when you watch this video. We will get it up as soon as I get the production done. We took a day off, had to take care of some stuff yesterday. Um, didn't want to have to do it, ended up not being that bad. Life's good. As good as it can be, let's put it that way. We are going to just have an enjoyable shave today. Um, game on. Go backwards with it that way. It's not in the way while I'm trying to shave. Ethos Honeysuckle. Y'all know I love my Honeysuckle. And we're going to use the Shield AC Blade Bark Edition. Uh, I'm going to load that on camera. And we're going to use the Duke 3, Simpson Duke 3 Best Badger. I really like the Best Badger from them. I haven't used their Vine or whatever it is they have. My face is just, my skin has been super just dry lately and flaky. I don't know why. Um, the weather's been all over the place. Cold, hot, cold, hot, humid, rain. So I don't know that it's the weather. But anyways, we got the AC that we were using. What did we use last time? Shit P30. That's what we were using. This is going to be second use. It's been sitting out. And I'm not doing it on camera because i got to focus. So you see the two notches there? Fit it in like that. And I hold it like this. Make sure the cap's going the right way. Ta -da! Done. Hold it like this. Thank you, Sefferton. I had never heard about shield razors. Other YouTubers have used them. I guess I just don't watch those YouTubers or I hadn't seen the videos. Um, my bad guys but shield razors they're pretty freaking cool man um like the bark titanium too i like the weights not too heavy but you can tell it's not aluminum it, it's really a good weight guys i do like titanium weighted razors i just don't have a budget to buy titanium razors all the time and i think steel is a little too heavy so i opt for aluminum um it's what fits my budget and it's it, it's what works for me if i could afford titanium that's what i would be buying so we're just going to load it like this. So I do not know the artisan's name at Ethos, but this is his firm base. And he says, you know, we work really hard to get all the liquid that we can out of the firm base. You know, make it as dry as possible. We're making it firm. So he doesn't prefer tub loading, but he says if you're going to tub load, can you do it upside down? You know, keep the water out of the tub as much as possible. It's just what he recommends for his soap. I've never tub loaded his soap. Not that I remember, at least not in the firm base. And uh, look at all that extra water just kind of in the knot. I'm just gonna try to stick with it and we're gonna try to get a good load. Yeah, sorry, this will be a little longer video. Y'all know how it is when I face lather and load on camera. It always takes more time. I even loaded razor on camera this time. There we go. My lips have been super chapped, so I've been putting on a lot of chapstick and like this Neosporin and overnight stuff to like really help. And I broke out with the pimple here because I guess I was putting too much moisturizer. Like you can put too much chapstick on and then it causes issues. Um, God, that's too much water. I soaked this brush too long. I was talking to people. Really one person. Let's do it more like that so Bill's not hitting the my back when I lean my head back. Oh yeah. I love this honeysuckle. I, it, it's up there. Like it is more natural and I love it. And I say I like it more than PAA, but PAA has its place too. It's very similar, but there's like a clay like underneath to, uh, PAA Son of Honeysuckle. I may not have loaded enough for this brush, but I let this brush soak for like a good 20 minutes and I don't, I never have good results when I over soak a brush. That's all right. Best Badger from Simpson. Like I said, I've never had anything but their Best Badger. It's got scrub, no scritch. It's got a good amount of backbone. It feels lovely. I know it's not a huge knot. I think this is like 22 millimeter think 
I sent it to DK to use. He said it was nice and fine. Like, this is my favorite badge or not. But he didn't feel like it was anything special. He felt like it was more of an old school knot, if I remember correctly. But it's still high density. Because, like, if you want to compare old school, it's not as old school as, like, your vintage um, Ever Ready. Or your vintage... Uh, what other brush brand was I thinking about? Like, Century or something like that. So, it's not modern as in like 2000s, but it's modern as in like early 2000s, 90s, you know? It's not 60s, 70s style, which there's a difference. These are a little bit more higher dense. They say hand tied, hand tied. Guys, that is the misnomer right there. Is that a badger hair? Yeah, that was a badger hair. Every knot is hand tied. Every knot you order from China, whether it's synthetic, every Italian knot, everybody hand ties their knots. There is not a machine that's tying and gluing knots, guys. So when somebody says, oh, well, I've got hand tied knots, well, no shit, everybody carries hand tied knots. Every knot's hand tied. Like, the thing was, China did it cheaper than we did it here in the States. China caught on to, man, they're really overcharging for these hand-tied knots. <laughs> like, we hand-tie knots all the time. Um, that's all we do. That's what they are. The only issue with China is the quality control supposedly not as good. And that's not the case because, like, some of the people that spend hand-tying knots over here, you still get black tips. And it's like, hey, you know, I'm paying for you to, like, make sure that was turned the right way. Um, you're supposed to quality control. That's that's why we're paying you $60 more than we would pay China for their knots because you're supposed to be making sure. Like, I see it here on this. Like, you know, probably can't see it. You see that little black dot? Like, that's either one that's like a pure badger hair or the hair is upside down, and that's not the tip. And that's fine, but I mean... If we're buying from you, who's, oh, we hand tie, we do everything, our quality control, then why am I getting product like this? Like, I'm buying a higher end product from you, supposed to be higher end, and I can get the same thing from China. The issue with some Chinese knots, you know, really cheap ones, is the glue bump comes up too high. I am impressed with the shield price points. I will tell you that if you were to buy a shield razor, I would not buy it from Bull Goose. I have looked now. A little bit better. I think Bull Goose starts at like 120 plus to like 180 something dollars for the razors. Made by Shield. Um The, uh, if you go to AliExpress, it'll take a little longer to get here, but they're like, not a single one of their razors is more than $105, and they're titanium. And then I think the stainless steel is like in the 50s, and the aluminum's in the 30s. I think it's a good option. Um... I don't think they're ripping you off. I don't know what labor is in China. We know it's much, it, it's inexpensive in comparison to America and other countries. Like Yaki. So we all remember how Uomo used to be cheaper. Yaki was cheaper. I mean, technically they still are, but now they're not that much cheaper. Like you consider that the price they're charging inexpensive for made in Canada, made in America. But for made in China, I feel like you're asking high end price. Like here's a razor that I shared with David Gonzalez. So sharp David. Um, I'll link his channel below if you haven't seen it. Um, 
I was talking with him and I was talking with Seth for 10 and here's the razor. We were talking about throw some picks up. And it's 316 stainless. It's intriguing. Like, hey, it's very steampunky. It's a man's man razor. I'm going to attack that facial hair. You know, like it, it's it's very aggressive looking, very manly, for lack of a better term, you know. Um but it's $92. And it's stainless steel razor. Like, you do realize, like, made in America razor, stainless steel TRC razor is 80 bucks. I'm rounding up. We're not doing cents. So don't you feel like $92 for the stainless steel razor made in China is a little expensive? Um, Uomo's got a really cool knot that I'm interested in doing. Um... But it's $79 and some odd cents, $80 for their Badger Knot for a uh, 26 millimeter, I think it is, which is what I would need for the brush I want to put it in. I'm like, dude, that's, that's highway robbery. <laughs> but I'll show you a picture of that, um, the one that's 80 bucks. They totally treated it, so it's completely white. And I know, I'm not talking about the products I'm using, I'm just kind of ranting about you know, the shave world and products from China. Like, Yaki's got some really cool looking razors. Um, I'll probably get it at some point, but I'll put up a picture of the handle. It's a dupe of the Darwin handle. And then I want the uh, head to go with that handle. And the head is a dupe of, here's the head. Um, the Gillette Goodwill razor. Like the looks of it. I don't know if blade gap and everything else and head geometry is the same. But the way it's made and the way it holds the blade looks like the Goodwill razor. And I feel like that Darwin handle with that would be a good look. Similar time frame they were made. Um, similar time frame those designs came from. But that razor is like $85 to combine that head and handle, stainless steel. And like I said, so it's, it's a lot of money for a razor made in China. And I kind of want to buy them and hope they're fine, but the issue with Chinese made products was quality control wasn't as good. But I just kind of touched on that, that quality control is a uh, There we go. Sorry. Quality control isn't what it should be when you're buying stuff made in the states, made in the UK either. So Carve, very proud of Carve. I don't have as much experience with Aylesworth, but I hear Aylesworth does awesome work as well. Um, Rex does well. Blackland has some finishing issues, but they got great customer service. Great, I mean, whatever that's worth. Um, I also was going to say, totally lost train of thought talking about that. We did Nick right here. You'll see that. I thought so when I was lathering. It's kind of why I paused for a second. I was like, we'll see if it happens. But we're not getting the quality control here we're paying for either. So at this point, I'm kind of willing to see what China's doing. Because we're just not getting that quality control. Carve, though. Like I said, they're killing it. always have been um, the only thing they've ever sucked on is fulfilling orders that was the only issue with carve it has never been oh I got the razor and it had all these issues I've never heard anyone call and or report or comment on videos or in forums that I've seen that carve has put out a shitty product finishing was off something was wrong never
and I like using carved because, in my opinion, they are the standard. Um, inexpensive, high quality goods. Quality control is where it should be. So I've got some things to do that, that I just need to spend money on first. But I do want to make some purchases at Yaki. Almost wish they'd send me stuff. You know, it's just buying razors are expensive even from them now. So like me picking up like, oh, I'm going to pick up three or four razors from Yaki. It's not really... It's feasible as it once was. So, all right, I'm gonna do some more rinse up off camera. I gotta go get my splash because I didn't bring that in here. And we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we are back. Feels pretty good. I will tell you, Ethos, and I'm not gonna link this soap necessarily. I'm just gonna link all the Ethos soaps and splashes and stuff like that you can pick up from Razor Emporium. Check them out. I know not everybody's into Honeysuckle. I love Honeysuckle, but Ethos, sorry, next door neighbor must open the uh, door that we have a joining hallway that we share. But anyways, to get to the garage, we'll use a good amount. Ethos just, premium containers, premium packaging, really good all organic products. And I can actually tell you, I feel a difference from using this than I do other products, which is saying something, because I'm not normally someone who says that I really get a difference out of, oh, the post on this soap, the post on this splash, this splash is something different. It has alcohol, and it's much better than a lot of alcohol splashes I've had. I've had other splashes that have alcohol in it, but I don't get the alcohol burn from them. I get the alcohol burn from this, and I still get a very pleasant post from it. Um, this is a treat yourself soap. Like, I feel it's worth it with the packaging and everything else. Man, this is just bothering me right here. It, it's where I had to pop that before I came on camera because I noticed it. It's trimming up the goatee and there it was. Um, but, I mean, look at that packaging. I mean, whether you like the colors and stuff, but, I mean, it's premium. Like... I like the clear tubs. It feels nice and heavy. It's plastic, though. It's not glass. It's just nice. And, and it is a heavy pour. I think this is a, this is the 7.5 ounce. Um, but anyways, I think that's it. I hope y'all hung around and enjoyed the discussion. Um, I'm going to have to do a lot of editing to put up all those pictures. But I want y'all to know what I was talking about. It's a little bit of a rant. Like... Price of everything's going up. Like even buying stuff off uh, AliExpress with Yaki. Like everything's going up. But anyways, that's it. You made it this far. You know what to do. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And hit that noti bell. And hopefully Deacon Shaves in the next week contacts me about the win. If not, we're going to have to run, you know, a new uh, uh, comment picker. So we'll catch you next shave.